Portugal's at the top uh, on the odds board. They're minus 163 to win it. Uruguay, two to one. South Korea, 10 to one. Ghana, 16 to one. This one sets up beautifully if you're a World Cup uh, historian. We remember Uruguay and Ghana have a fun rivalry because of Luis Suarez with the reverse hand of God uh, against Ghana. Back in uh, 2010, I think this conversation is going to go down a, a pretty similar path and it'll branch off. All of us think that Portugal is a vulnerable favorite at the top uh, in terms of the group. I actually think Port- Portugal, if you like them, just invest in them to win the tournament uh, at 14 to one, because you just don't, you don't want to lay this money. Cause I think Uruguay at 50 to one are my favorite bet uh, for a sleeper in the entire tournament on the big board. Fede Val- Federico Valverde is a, a an absolute wonderkind uh, from Real Madrid. Uh, He's the they got, of the tournament. Yeah, Darwin Nunez uh, is uh, he should be great, you know, in, in especially in this kind of environment. Then they got like Suarez and Cavani who can fill in and and, and be those lifesavers off the uh, lifeguards off the the sub bench, whoever's not starting. I, I mean, I think there's a lot to like here for the South American side. Uh, New manager, obviously, Oscar Tabarez was there forever. Uh, he was there for 15 years. Diego Alonso's there now. They've got him playing a little bit more on the front foot than they were. They were, they used to just be this robust 4-4-2 with Godin and uh, whatever his name is in, in the back, uh, the triple name guy. And and then they would just get the ball to Forlan, Suarez, Cavani, whoever whoever is the striker uh, at the time. But they're much more talented kind of all over the pitch here. And it's a team that you, Anthony talked about, like peaks and valleys. I think we're kind of going up uh, in a weird way because you think like Suarez and Cavani are aging out, but there's this new class of player that's coming to take their spots and they're all good. So I like uh, Uruguay 50 to one to win the tournament. If you're doing like a group winner parlay, I think they're a good you know price to throw in there at, at two to one because the Portugal side, I think I, I liked, I, I, it sounds weird to say, I like their long-term prospects much more than I do uh, to win the group, but that's how I'll be playing this one. BJ. Anything here? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you. I like Uruguay more from a futures perspective, potentially to win the tournament, to get to the quarters, to get to the semis, than I do necessarily to win this group. I just don't think the price is really there on Uruguay. Portugal, you know, they obviously have all the talent in the world, but I mean, we saw it throughout the Euros, right? They got completely dominated by Germany. Like, yes, they dominated Hungary. Like, they dominated Belgium. They couldn't really finish. Like, Let's be honest, Ronaldo's completely cooked. They're very reliant on him up top. Diego Jota is out. Uh, and it's another team that I don't really think is that great out of possession. Like they just, they don't have a lot of ball winning midfielders. Like, you know, they have have Bruno Fernandes, they have Bernardo Silva. Those are great attacking midfielders, but they, uh, they're really going to rely on essentially Ruben Neves and, you know, Patina and all these guys, like in terms of midfields, like I think Uruguay has a better midfield than, than Portugal in terms of defensive midfielders, but the two ways I'm going to be playing this group is I I like South Korea to advance. Obviously it's very dependent on if Hyun Min's son plays, right? Because if he doesn't, then I would say I don't like this bet, but they're plus 225 to advance. Incredibly impressive throughout Asian qualifying. You know, they were the second best team behind Japan, you know, obviously they didn't really play anybody, but they're a team much like Japan that is just lives in transition. They're very, very good at their pressing. They're very good at sitting deep and countering a lot of teams. And, you know, midfield is a question mark for them, but they have, they have a really good defender in Napoli's Min Jae Kim, who's having a breakout season in Syria. Ah, like he's averaging over three tackles plus, plus interceptions per 90. And he's like a big reason why Napoli's been one of the best defensive teams in Europe, but the attacking talent that South Korea possesses with Hyun Min Son to punish teams on the counter, especially two teams in this group, uh, like, I, I think they should very, they shouldn't be a pick them against Ghana. Like I'll get to Ghana in second, but this is a team I love to get through. I mean, him and son can really carry them again. If he doesn't play, I don't like this bet at all because he, they are very, very reliant on him, but they are a team that's very well drilled to play out of possession and counter teams. Ghana is the team. I like to finish bottom of this group as my, at minus minus one ten. They are maybe the most influx team. I think coming into this world cup, like they just fired their manager, uh, after the Africa Cup of Nations, after a really poor showing, they couldn't get out of a group with Morocco, Gabon, and Comoros. They lost 3-2 to Comoros in the final match, ended up getting him fired. They brought in uh, Otto Adu, who's been a, 
a, a player for the national team, but he's ne- the only experience he's had as a manager was managing the U19s for Hamburger in, in Germany. And listen, they somehow got past Nigeria in the African uh, World Cup playoffs, but they were incredibly lucky to do so. Like they created Shame, really 0.6 expected goals over the two legs. It was just a Thomas party weird goal from outside the box and they kind of just held on to it and that's how they got through it's a real shame because nigeria is one of the powerhouses across africa i mean so another thing that really concerns me is that okay so ghana really if overall didn't really have much talent right they have thomas party is one of the best defensive midfielders in the premier league and they got a couple of guys to switch nationalities Tariq lampy and aki williams from athletic bilbao who's been obviously very good in la liga but they haven't really played with the national team that much. Like they played two matches in Africa, Africa, Africa Cup of Nations qualification in June. They drew with the Central Africa Republic 1-1. Like that team is, I have ranked 177th in the world. Like it's just a, it was a very weird performance. And the XG suggests that that result was actually right. So I'm concerned about Ghana from just a tactical perspective of like, they don't seem to really have an identity right now or really what they want to do. They obviously have, you know, they have, it's not like they don't have talent. Like, you know, Joku and Armati is a, is a capable center back pairing. And Aki Williams, like I already mentioned, is very good. But they played a friendly against Brazil. They got beat very soundly, 3 nothing. Like, they really didn't look like they knew what they really wanted to do. They do come out and press high. Like, they have pace. But that leaves a lot of open space in behind, something that's South Korea and obviously Uruguay and Portugal can really take advantage of. So, I really think that this Ghana team is just not that great. I think they're going to lose to South Korea. Like, so I think minus 110 is a fantastic price for them to finish bottom of this group. And then obviously South Korea to advance at plus 225. All right, Anthony, what about you for group H? Uruguay, Uruguay, Uruguay. That's right. You know, I don't look at qualifying numbers that much. Like I said that earlier, and I'm kind of like, uh, you know, we'll see. Um, Uruguay, from an expected goals point of view, had really encouraging underlying numbers. This in the, in the cycle, you know, they had the third best expected goals for, they were not that far behind Argentina to the point where they just didn't finish so that their qualification was a little bit dicier than it needed to be. They went through an incredibly weird variant spell where every chance was missed. Uh, and I just don't expect that to continue. And I think they're underrated. You mentioned the defenders. Godin is still there. He's like the Pepe, you know, he never dies, never retires. He's just there and always solid. And and you can get away with it when you play as Uruguay does. They're not going to be a hugely pressing team. Nobody really presses a ton. And and that's the one thing, the difference between international club. And, you know, you just don't see the the structure out of possession, the the pressing nature. You just don't see that as much in international. That's why the teams who are effective at it, like Denmark uh, and, and even those Italy teams that won the Euro last year, like that's what makes them so much more dangerous. I think the biggest point to make in this group is that the biggest difference between talent, like the sum of the parts and the whole, and the whole in this entire world might be Portugal. And it's because Fernando Santos doesn't let them be expansive. Doesn't let them show what they have, which is an incredible group of attackers. I mean, we, we can list off all the good players. Like if you just pull up the rosters and said, all right, who do we really like? We're like, wow, Portugal. Oh my gosh, they have so many good players. Even not just attackers, but fullbacks, Rafael Guerrero, Joao Cancelo in, in attack, Fernandez, Ronaldo, Jota's injured, okay, but Bernardo, Bernardo Silva. Silva. Yeah, yeah. Like there's so many good players. You're like, how can this team not be good? And then you turn on the game and you watch them and you're like, man, this team really sticks. <laughs> like they, they just don't, have a plan to progress the ball up the pitch. Like let's not forget Portugal probably wouldn't have made the world cup if North Macedonia hadn't beaten Italy in that stunning upset miracle, because Portugal probably would have lost to Italy who was better. Uh, And you look at Portugal's numbers in qualifying. It wasn't that impressive. Like their attack put up good numbers, but that was against such weak competition. The second best team in their group was Serbia. The rest of the group was, was awful. And, and the defense didn't hold up that well. So I am concerned about Portugal across the board. I think they're a fade team in this tournament. I thought they were a fade team going into uh, the, the Euros as well. Um, they were 11th in expected goals allowed in, in, in Europe. So 
I'm not buying into the Portugal narratives. I think Uruguay is the team to just take a step forward. Uruguay did beat them at the last World Cup to knock them out. Uh, I think Portugal and, and Ronaldo is a problem too. I mean, even the Ronaldo compared to the Euros last year or compared to the last, like it's a huge difference in how much he's fallen off. They can't rely on him. And if they're going to build their entire attack around him, that hurts the attack. I think the biggest thing you see too, Bruno Fernandez is so good at times for United when he's getting on the ball and able to get space to make those dangerous passes. And he's a high risk passer, right? So he doesn't have a high completion percentage, but when he does pick that right pass, it's beautiful. Remember the story coming out of the Euros last year? Bruno Fernandez doesn't turn up for club, doesn't turn up for country, out of form, choked at the Euros. That was the narrative. The reality is they just don't have anybody who can get him the ball. They couldn't progress the ball at the pitch enough to get Bruno space to do his thing. So, and I don't think they solved that issue at all. So I'm out on Portugal. I like Uruguay to win the group. 